Gaza health authorities say at least 55 Palestinians died Monday during mass protests as the U.S. officially opened its new embassy in Jerusalem. Demonstrators condemned the United States' decision to recognize Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. Palestinian protesters in Gaza set fires and threw firebombs across the border into Israel. Israeli troops fired on the demonstrators in an act that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called self-defense. Holly Williams has more. They were angry today in Gaza about the new U.S. embassy. Men and women threw rocks. And while many protesters were peaceful, some started fires along the border fence with Israel. They've been demonstrating here for six weeks now, 40,000 of them today, according to Israel, encouraged by Hamas, the militant group that's controlled the Gaza Strip since 2007. Israeli soldiers dropped tear gas canisters from drones. They'd already dropped leaflets warning Palestinians not to get too close to the fence. And when they did, the Israelis used live ammunition. There are casualties coming back from the fence. Some of them have been shot and it is utter chaos here. Palestinians want to return to lands they fled in 1948 when the state of Israel was founded. And they are furious over what they say is American bias towards Israel. But with their slingshots and burning tyres, the protesters, including six children who were reportedly killed today, seem to be losing their lives for nothing. But many Palestinians, like Hakam Abu Shanab, who wants to study for a master's degree, believe dancing with death is the only way to show their desperation. You have a very bright future. Are you willing to die here? Dying here is the only way. Or, or expressing, or at least expressing our feeling uh, to the world, show them that we are dying every day here. These protests are also fueled by economics. Gaza's been blockaded for more than 10 years now. Nearly half of young people can't find jobs, while most families depend on humanitarian aid. Holly Williams joins me now from Gaza. Holly, you've been reporting there in Gaza for several days. What is the atmosphere there like as these protests have intensified? Well, Elaine, there's a lot of anger, and, and these protests are motivated by feelings of anger on the part of many ordinary Palestinians who live here in Gaza on a whole range of issues. First of all, Palestinians condemn the move of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem uh, because they hope that East Jerusalem will one day be their capital uh, if they ever get the state of their own that they hope for. Uh, then there's the issue of uh, their perceived American bias towards Israel. They believe that America is biased towards Israel and many Palestinians are furious about that. Then there are, there are long-standing issues. These protests began around six weeks ago uh, as a great march of return. And, and what do Palestinians mean by that? They're talking about the fact that so many of their families fled land uh, in 1948 uh, after the state of Israel was founded and, and they want to return to those lands. There are roughly two million people living here in Gaza, uh, an area area smaller than the city of Denver, uh, and two-thirds of them are either refugees uh, or the descendants of refugees. And then on top of that, there is the economic frustration that is felt by so many Palestinians who live in Gaza. This place has been under a blockade now uh, for more than 10 years, and there are all sorts of problems that go with that, including frequent power cuts, uh, contaminated water, uh, almost 50 per cent unemployment, uh, and shortages of the goods that people need. Well, Holly, we have seen the pictures of the violence and chaos that has taken place. Can you give us more detail about the scene, specifically near the border? Yeah, well, we were at the border uh, for several hours today during those protests. Um, and pretty extraordinary scenes. There were a lot of people there. Uh, the Israeli military says that around 40,000 Palestinian protesters uh, went to the border fence today. Where we were, uh, th there were several thousand, difficult to count. 
Uh, many, if not most, of the Palestinians uh, were peaceful. But some of them uh, moved very close to the fence. They, they threw stones. Uh, they used slingshots to hurl stones uh, across the border into Israel. Uh, they, they, they lit fires. Uh, and then, in return, we saw Israeli soldiers using drones to drop tear gas canisters on the protesters uh, and then firing live ammunition. Well, Holly, the White House on Monday blamed Hamas for the deaths of dozens of Palestinians. Can you tell us about the roles of Hamas and uh, the Israeli soldiers you just mentioned in terms of this violence? Mm -hmm. Well, Hamas has certainly uh, encouraged these protests, uh, but they didn't instigate them in the beginning. That was that was other Palestinians uh, who, who started this idea of a, of a great uh, march of return. Um, Israel uh, has uh, responded with live ammunition, um, as I just discussed. And Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Israel is simply acting in self-defense. However, today we also heard uh, from the UN human rights chief who criticized Israel uh, for, quote, the shocking killing of dozens by live fire. And Holly, these protests are expected to continue in the coming days. Is there a sense that the violence may uh, calm down now that the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem has passed? Well, Elaine, these, uh, these protests were due to culminate tomorrow, um, which uh, Palestinians call their, their day of catastrophe. It's the 70th anniversary of their day of catastrophe uh, following the founding of the State of Israel. But we are hearing some speculation tonight that tomorrow's protest, uh, which uh, was many thought would be the biggest protest so far, might be cancelled uh, because Palestinian leaders, leaders in Hamas here in Gaza, are concerned uh, by the loss of life so far. But, but so far, that is just speculation, just chatter here in Gaza, that that protest tomorrow may be cancelled. Holly Williams in Gaza. Holly, thank you.